Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Very good. It's kind of nice to be back here. We had, you know, New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day and had some time off, nice little big long weekend. And I'm not trying to complain, but I'm just saying it's going to be nice to be back in the office like for like a whole week. Yay. I think it's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be, you know, kind of getting back into the swing of things. I could so. go back home. Well, <laughs> you keep it up and maybe you will. So. <laughs> Hey, coming up later in the program, we've got a special guest we'll be chatting with. But first, I want to tell you about this. Two senior Russian communist members of parliament have presented a draft bill calling for people who come out as gay in Russia to serve up to 15 days behind bars. Whoa! Yeah, that's, uh, you know, those those folks over there in Russia, people who are saying, oh, hey, they're so tolerant. Whoa. Yeah, not so much. Imagine if that was presented here yeah, in the United States. Yeah, there's no States. way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wouldn't wouldn't work out so hot. Coming up here in uh, a bit, we're going to tell you what special things are happening on this Monday. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, January the 4th. Today is Blue Monday. You know what that means? I have no idea what that means. It's it means the you're most... depressed and miserable because yeah, you're it is. back at work. Seriously, it is the most depressing day of the year, according to many. Yeah. Because I'm back. I have to I go back to work. With... <laughs> I can't have to agree with that. Well, this goes hand in hand. It's also National Divorce Day. Whoa. Yeah, Divorce Monday. So apparently this is the day when people say, you know what he got me? He got me a dishwasher. Really? Yeah, my husband got me... Uh, a gym membership. Yeah. A treadmill. Anyway, uh, it's also Dimple Chad Day. Pop, you remember that back in 2000? Dimple Chad, the election? You're looking like you know, don't remember the Al Gore. Oh, I remember Bush. the Hanging yeah. Chad. Yeah, I don't remember Dimple Chad. Dimple Chad. Okay. Pop Music Chart Day, Tom Thumb Day, World Braille Day, World Hypnotism Day, Trivia Day, Thank God It's Monday Day, and National Way In Day. So today's the day. For all of those things and much, much more, thanks for listening to us on this Monday, the fourth day of January. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. Well, you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Brothers Zlot and Gizda Pila are so poor they've been living in a cave, out, a cave outside of Budapest, Hungary. Hmm. They sell scrap that they find on the street for pennies. However, they, along with their sister who lives in America, are about to inherit their grandmother's massive fortune of four billion dollars. These guys are cavemen right now. Literally, they live in a cave. Whoa. They're gonna they're going to inherit grandma's four billion dollar fortune. Homeless charity workers in Hungary were contacted by lawyers handling the estate of the brother's maternal grandmother who died recently. 43-year-old Giza said, We knew our mother came from a wealthy family, but she was a difficult person and severed ties with them and then uh, later abandoned us, and we lost touch with her and with our father until she eventually died. Under wow. German law, direct descendants are automatically entitled to a share of any estate. Now the brothers are obtaining copies of their grandmother's death certificate and proof of their family's connection before traveling to Germany to claim their inheritance. So I got an email once that said that happened. Hey, uh, yeah. just send us a bunch of money. Uh, I got to say something quick. <laughs> about a week ago, I posted a thing because everybody was online talking about this whole, uh, what's the guy's name? Mark Zuckerberg. Going to give him uh, four, four right. million. So I found a picture of him and I threw it online being completely kidding. I posted this and I said, "Hey, congratulations! Uh, good luck! I, uh, listen to this. My good, I don't know what I said. I don't know what I said. I had Tourette's apparently. Uh, I said, "Hey, I, I won! Thank you to everybody that was telling me about this. I won! I got a letter from a guy that says he's Mark Zuckerberg's attorney. Uh, he's in Nigeria, and all I have to do is give him my bank info, and they're going to transfer all the money to me." <laughs> I said this as a joke, and you would not believe how many people thought I was serious. They're all like, they're "Don't like, do it, John. That's a John, scam. That's a scam. Don't do that." I'm like. <laughs> Seriously, you I'm thought not I was stupid? 
So I, I posted oh, on there. Funny. I said, I'm, I'm absolutely concerned about the number of people who know me and think I'm a moron. So <laughs> I knew it was a joke. That was the whole point. All right. Anyway, this one is not a joke. These guys, these cavemen that live in Hungary That's are about cool. to become billionaires. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. You know you've got a bit of a drug problem when you stop to do drugs while you're being chased by the police. Oh, my gosh. And Connecticut, a man stole a car. He attempted to fill up on gas using a stolen credit card. Police were alerted and the chase was on. Since the police knew where the car, what the car looked like, the thief decided to take off on foot. During the chase and after climbing over a fence, he stopped to take a little hit off his crack pipe. Oh, my gosh. That's when they caught him. <laughs> uh, they caught him. Uh, he stopped one more time, I guess, to smoke his crack. And that's when they caught him the second time. Anyway, it surprised him that the police caught up to him so fast. Wow, you guys are quick. No kidding? We didn't stop twice to smoke our crack pipe. That's what's going on. So anyway, that's the kind of dumb stuff you do when your brain is on drugs. Kids, don't ever start. Then you don't have to quit. How's that sound? Anyway, coming up, we've got uh, your moment of duh, and it's a fun one today. It's on the way. It's about Mayor Stupid. (laughs) I think it's funny. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at one 844 204-1055. Have you ever wanted to tell city officials that they're just stupid? Oh, yeah. Well, here's a city official that was telling everybody else that he was stupid. It's actually kind of funny. It's a mayor in a town in Tennessee. Uh, where, where's it at here? Spring Hill, Tennessee. That's okay. the name of the town. And uh, after watching an hour of news, you might be tempted to call politicians stupid three or four times. But this politician encouraged you to call him stupid. In 2001... A Tennessee mayor had the email address set up, mayor at stupid.com. Ray Williams, the mayor of Spring Hill, Tennessee, said he was trying to avoid taking himself or politics too seriously. So while he was setting it up and running for mayor, he thought, let's kind of have some fun. Mayor at stupid.com. There you go. That's kind of funny. I I don't know if that's still his address. And if it is, you have to send him something stupid. (laughs) Coming up here in a bit, we have your scoop of the day. That is on the way. This scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your scoop of the day. According to a report by the U.S. Center for Medicine, uh, Medicare, and Medicaid Services, Americans say that they will spend one out of every five dollars of their income on health care this year. Hmm. So if you make five dollars, one of those dollars is going to go to health care. If you make $100, 20 of those dollars is going to go to health care. I think that sounds kind of crazy. Scientists in Australia accidentally stumbled onto a substance that can remove toxic mercury from the sea. It's called limonene. And guess where they find it? We talked about this. In an orange peel. Oh, yeah. The team was working with sulfur and limonene to create a red rubber-like polymer. When they began running tests to measure the potential harm on the environment, they discovered quite the opposite doesn't harm it it helps it the substance will suck mercury right out of the water so now they've got to get a whole lot of oranges and start throwing them in the ocean (laughs) it's a bad idea probably Uh, and don't you think that there's i mean mercury is in the water for a reason right don't don't you think we should not be messing with it i don't know i'm not in charge of that department so thank goodness (laughs) i don't know by getting seems like a bad idea to me you done? I'm done. <laughs> okay, just, just saying. Don't mess with it. <laughs> don't mess with mercury. <laughs> hey, getting by on less sleep could be a good way to lose weight, Heidi. Mm. That news comes from scientists at an international sleep conference. You know, conference. they're constantly contradicting themselves. One week they say you need to get more sleep in order to lose weight, and now they're saying, oh, yeah, don't, well, don't get any now sleep. Now they're saying five hours of sleep every night. Oh, good Lord. That's what you're supposed to get. It's supposed to be seven. Five percent more energy is burned when you get just five hours of sleep, according to this little group of scientists who don't sleep much. So there you go. <laughs> hey, something to think about. Uh, when two people kiss, they exchange 10 million, somewhere between 10 million and 1 billion bacteria. Hmm. However, kissing is good for your teeth. Experts say the anticipation of a kiss increases the flow of saliva to your mouth 
giving your teeth a plaque dispersing bath. Ew. French kissing involves 34 muscles in your face, while a little pucker only involves two. Passionate kissing burns 6.4 calories a minute. So really? there's my workout plan, Heidi. <laughs> some passionate kisses. We'll do that right after our scoop of the day. Hey, your trash could become a holiday treat for some goats in western Colorado. The Top of the Hill Ranch in Colbran, it's about 40 miles east of Grand Junction, Colorado, they're offering to pick up discarded Christmas trees from nearby homes to give them to their goats so they have extra roughage during the winter. Hmm. Rancher Teresa Fletcher says the goats devour a tree in less than an hour. Hmm. So they eat those trees. Crazy. Yeah. Christmas lights, tinsel and all. <laughs> Hopefully not. A new survey found men with beards look five years older than men who are clean shaven. I agree. Especially if, like mine, when I grow whiskers, they come in gray. Something's broken. I don't know what happened there. Uh, it says when they were shown pictures of celebrities without facial hair, they said the beards made them look, on average, five years older. So they'd show them, hey, here's so-and-so. Now here he is with his beard. Uh, which one looks better? They're like, well, he looks better over here. Over here, it looks a lot older, like five years older, according to this picture. Hey, uh, Australian scientists claim they might be able to take away the beer hangover. Really? Heidi just perked I up. I am perking up. She went from taking a nap to <laughs> what? <laughs> Nutrition experts at the Griffin Health Institute made some beer that was more like Gatorade. In essence, the scientists added electrolytes to their beer, and there was mm -hmm. no hangover the next day. But does it still taste like beer? Uh, tastes like Beer with Gatorade in it, apparently. Finally, a study that's useful. <laughs> All right. Hey, speaking of useful, this is probably useless. It's our strange law. If a man is wearing a striped suit, you can throw a knife at him in Natoma, <laughs> Kansas. So I'm not exactly sure who came up with that law. Do not wear a Maybe striped suit. Maybe because they thought they looked like gangsters or apparently, something? Apparently. Don't wear a striped suit in Natoma, Kansas. They'll throw a knife at you and they'll get away with it because it's That's a, hilarious. It's the law. It's a strange law, and this has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. I've got a special guest on the telephone line with me right now. I have Steve Silberberg, and Steve is a curator of the Air Sickness Bag Museum. How are you doing, sir? Great. This is kind of an interesting concept. How in the world, you've got the largest collection of air sickness bags in the world, uh, almost 2,700 unique bags. How did you get started in a collection like this? Um, well, I, I guess I just need attention or something. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it, you know, people collect things, and and I knew, I knew when I was a kid that I would never be the best stamp or coin collector in the world. So when I saw a bark dog on a flight, I thought, just maybe this could be me. There you go. And so how old were you when you had your very first barf bag that you that you collected? How old were you? I was probably 20 years old. I was on a flight from uh, Boston to San Francisco, and there it was. Are there a lot of people that collect air sickness bags, or is this a pretty rare collection? Well, there are about 100 of us who collect worldwide. And I do want to correct you and say I do not have the largest collection in the world. I have the largest collection in the continental United States. Okay. Uh, but there are about 100 of us. About half of the collectors are in Germany, believe it or not. So now, why in the world would this be a big thing in Germany? You know, I wondered that myself. And the conclusion that I've come to is that because they have the six-week vacation as standard in Germany, it's kind of a status symbol to say, hey, I've been to all these places on my on my long vacation. Okay. Um, and for some reason, it, it appeals to the German sense of humor, but I haven't figured that out. The largest collection in the world, then, is it in Germany? It is actually in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. It's a guy named Nick Wurmulen. What is the number that he has? He's in the 6,000 somewhere. No kidding. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It shows a real dedication to do that. I think he does it full time. Unfortunately, I have a job and a career and all that. I went to your website, and it's fun. It's airsicknessbags.com, and you can look at different pictures. Is there a particular air sickness bag that you have that you say, this was the one that I've been waiting for, or is that one still out there somewhere? Well, certainly the space shuttle bag, of which I have one, is is really the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That'd be like your Babe Ruth bag, maybe? Yeah, it's my favorite bag. So the, the space shuttle bag is really the uh, one that's my favorite. There are a few others that people like, which are whimsical, like the Sin Aviation bag has a picture of a reindeer with kind of a, uh, 
pubis chunks coming out of its mouth. <laughs> it needs no instructions. It's actually quite beautiful. It's a piece of art, and its function is described perfectly by the photo. Now, how do you come about these bags? Where do you get them? Is this is this something that you personally go out and, and collect them, or do people mail these to you? How do you get the bags? I would love to say that I have been on 2,700 flights, but no, that's not, not the case. I collect mostly I get them by trading. You can also buy them on eBay, which I've done for certain bags. But for the most part, we get them either by trading with others and occasionally there is another collector who decides that they just lost their passion for air sickness bags and will bestow a collection upon me. And that is just awesome when that happens. Until I saw this information about you, I didn't know this was a thing. But under the just the rare circumstance that the, maybe there's somebody listening that has a collection, if they want to connect with you, can they connect with you through the website airsicknessbags.com? Yeah, there's a place where it says swaps and donations, and just go there. I think my email address is splattered all over the page somewhere. Well, and next time I go on a trip, and I haven't gone on one for about a year, but next time I go, I'll make sure I grab the air sickness bag. I every you know every time you take a flight, folks, they're sitting there waiting for you. Uh, I've never used one, thank goodness. But next time I get one, I'll I'll send it to you, and I'll make sure I send it to you unused. Thank you very much. That's quite considerate. <laughs> well, Steve, thank you for taking some time to chat with us. This this is really kind of a neat thing, and again, a very unique collection. I I've never heard of this before. But maybe in the new year, as people are thinking, what can I do to make 2016 really stand out for me? If you're looking for something new this year, maybe you start an air sickness bag collection. And Steve, how long have you been doing this one again? Uh, since 1981. Well, time flies when you're having fun, right? Yes, that's right. Well, I really appreciate taking some time to chat with us and, and uh, let folks know about something that I bet I bet there's at least one other person out there that had never heard of this. So we're expanding everyone's horizons today. Again, Steve Silberberg, and he is a curator at airsicknessbags.com. He has one of the largest collections of air sickness bags in the world, about 2,700 unique bags. And you can check that out and uh, learn more all about it. And and if you have some air sickness bags, maybe in your luggage that you're saying, hey, what am I going to do with these things? Get all the details on how you can get them to him at airsicknessbags.com. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by carsforsale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at carsforsale.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Scientists in Australia have discovered that new car smell, you know, the stuff they spray in your car to make it smell new again? It contains high levels of a toxic air emission that could actually make you sick. So if you you like the smell of a new car, you might actually get sick from it. That's what they're saying. Yikes. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? A very rich man from India named Raj Vajay lost his mansion, his land, and all of his money because... He flossed his teeth in the front row of f- what? In the front row of a cow? What does that mean? He flossed his teeth. Oh, in front of a cow. In front of a cow. <laughs> Hindus believe cattle are sacred. The acts are seen as disrespectful and it's illegal. What? So because he flossed his teeth in front of a cow, they took away his mansion, his land, and all oh of his my money. Gosh. Yeah. Th- shouldn't there be like a warning or something? <laughs> Should be some sort. Of- <laughs> That's crazy. He flossed his teeth in front of a cow and they took everything. That's crazy. So Raj Vijay, I bet you learned your lesson from that. <laughs> Coming up, going to talk about regifting. Apparently, it's regifting season right now. We'll tell you all about it. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Did you know that January is a very popular month for people to have their Christmas parties? Because there's so many people trying to have Christmas parties in December yeah, that things are booked. So there's a ton of people out there that are still going to be having Christmas parties this month. And this is interesting because now it's regifting season. Yeah. If you're like most people, you've gotten at least one thing stashed in a closet somewhere that somebody gave it to you and you're like, oh, thanks. What am I ever going to wear yeah. this? Or where am I going to use this thing? Well, regifting is a practice that you should make sure you know the guidelines. You don't want to ignore these. Here are the guidelines. Is the gift regiftable? First of all, never regift a handmade or one of a kind item. <laughs> Signed books, monogrammed items with your initials, those are off limits. You cannot do that. <laughs> Unless and, you know somebody with the same initials. Yeah. Hey, I got this for you. <laughs> See, so do I, do I know anybody with my initials? I, don't know, I guess I know. All right. How's the condition? Only new, unopened gifts in good condition should be considered for regifting. Never 
ever. Give a partially used gift. So if you have a gift card that you used $5 on it and you say, hey, it's a $25 <laughs> gift card and you got the 25 scratched out and now it says 20 you can't <laughs> give that away. Don't give items that you've owned for a long time. So somebody gave it to you five years ago and you're like, hey, I got this Snuggie that I never opened. <laughs> Don't give that. That's a bad rule of thumb. If you have to dust it off, it's not regiftable. Next, is this thing going to work? Successful regifters use common sense. If you're going to re-gift something, make sure you know who gave it to you so yes. you don't return something to the original giver. Only re-gift items to people who are not likely to know the original giver, too. There was an episode of Seinfeld that showed that. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, do you have good intentions? Don't give a gift just to give a gift. Be sure that the recipient will appreciate the item. Remember, if you feel that an item is undesirable, the whole thing's probably not going to work out. <laughs> and how does it look? When it comes to giving a gift, go for show. While giving gift bags in good condition that can be reused, wrapping paper is a one-time thing. Always spring for a new gift card tag. Don't try to scratch that out or white out over it. That's a bad idea. Next, have you considered your options? An unwanted gift could be a welcome donation for a charity as well. And there's a lot of people who do give their gift cards to charities. Next, do you remove the original card? If you did remove the original card, make sure you didn't like rip a piece of the box off. And if you did, <laughs> tape the other card over the top of that. Is it dead? Never re-gift something that's dead. Something that's dead? Yeah. So like if you have a, something like, like a, a... Puppy? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about something that's been taxidermy. Oh. So, hey, I, I caught this fish when I was eight and I had it uh, mounted. Here you go. Uh. There's a couple others on here, but I'm not going to. Anything that's over 10 years old or expired, say, no way. Can't do it. That's going to do it for your list of things that you shouldn't re-gift at your Christmas party or holiday party that's coming up this month. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on this Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Have you ever heard the expression hot foot? No. Nor have I, but apparently that's a thing. It says having a hot foot doesn't necessarily have to be just an expression. I've never even heard that expression. <laughs> City accountancy firm Deloitte and Touche organized a motivational training day for their workers. Part of the motivation was walking on hot coals. Huh. It's supposed to help you overcome anxieties. Yeah, and it'll help you burn your feet. Yeah. If you accomplish this, you're supposed to walk on hot coals barefoot. Uh, a woman was walking and she was being cheered on by colleagues. She complained of pain in her feet. They said, oh, shake it off. Her cheer workers scoffed. It's all in your head. Oh, my gosh. Blisters appeared on the soles of her feet. They were fire kisses. Wink, wink. And she was not really doing all that hot. Uh, she was off work for 14 days. Can the you imagine what this company's liability insurance must be? Magistrate's court heard the injured woman. <laughs> and it says, no more dangerous than walking on barefoot on sand is what the, the people that were putting on the event. Oh my However, gosh. it is believed... Uh, a pedicure fluid on her feet from several days earlier is what reacted to the heat. So it wasn't. The yeah, I'm actual... sorry. That's a bad idea. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what you've got on your feet. You don't walk around on coals. That's yeah, stupid. It's, I've seen people do that. I've just never, ever said, hey, I should try that. Yeah, I know. All right. Coming up, we got a time capsule. And I hope this story is a lot easier to read. I was trying to squeeze like three minutes worth of stuff into a minute there. And that didn't work so hot. But I got a good story on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. we got a time capsule story. Workers in Dublin found what they believe to be a time capsule from 200 years ago, Heidi. Oh. Cool. They were excavating a site in Dublin. They dug up a mysterious stone and metal box. Archaeologists believe it's a time capsule buried 200 years ago. The sealed container was discovered at a central Dublin site where a monument to the English naval hero Horatio Nelson once stood. Pat Wallace, director of Ireland's National Museum, said the box, measuring around two and a half feet by about one and a half feet, probably contained artifacts of the era, such as coins and newspapers. It's very exciting to find something that was historically tucked away, he told Reuters. The question, though, is, have the contents survived? My question is, why don't they open it to find out? How are we going to find out? you got to <laughs> crack on. that sucker open, open and tell it. us. All right. Uh, coming up here in a bit, I've got a really fun story to share. 
a thing called cloud advertising. <laughs> okay. It's making advertisements in the clouds. Okay. Why didn't I think of this? I don't it know. It is such a cool idea. We're going to tell you all about that here in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. These days, everybody's talking about the cloud, right, Heidi? Right. Well, how would you like to make your own cloud with your logo on it and push it into the sky? What? There's a company that's doing this. Francesco Guerra, whose company Snowmasters Incorporated, makes machines that churn out fake snow for Hollywood films. But he's also the man behind the latest advertising sensation that's sweeping the nation. It's called Flogos. Basically, these are foam clouds shaped huh. like your logo. They'll float up to 20,000 feet into the air. The four-foot shapes are made from tiny soap bubbles filled with helium. They'll travel for about 30 miles before they burst into tiny little pieces. They've invented a machine that can manip- manipulate the bubbles into any shape you want. They'll huh. pump in- into the sky at the rate of one every 15 seconds. He's already got Disney barking up at his uh, tree saying, hey, we'd like to have you start shooting out some Mickey-shaped clouds above huh. Disney World. Best of all, I bet that's not cheap. Probably not. Flogos are environmentally safe because they're just made of water, air, and helium, and a little bit of soap. So once they're done popping, it's not like you got stuff falling to the ground. So this is a cool idea. Why didn't I think of this? It'd be very cool to see our station logo flying around. Wouldn't that be awesome? We should do that. It'd be like flying over the fairs and flying over concerts. I wonder how much this is. You look up and you see the radio station logo up there. I'm like, that would be so cool. That's cool. I I doubt that it's going to be in the budget for 2016. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't matter how much it is. How much is it? 18 cents. Yeah, we we just can't afford it. (laughs) We can't. Yeah, we didn't we didn't pencil that one in. (laughs) Anyway, I think it's a cool idea. And. In one spot, it says they called it cloudvertising, but everywhere else it's referred to as flogos, F-L-O-G-O-S. Huh. So you're going to have to write that down. So someday when we got a budget, maybe we can get one of these. <laughs> it's probably going to be <laughs> 10 or 15 years. I think it's really cool. Uh, cool. Again, uh, that's coming from somewhere over in England that they're doing this. Coming up, we got something positive to end this program with. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. I always try to end this program with something positive, and good news, Heidi, I actually found two positive stories for today. Oh, good. If you have a bookshelf filled with books... And you have an electronic device that you now use to read all of your books. There's a new app that can actually help you make those books go to your device. It's called Shelfie. And they, re- they present readers with options of getting the electronic equivalent of the book on their shelf. It's yeah. kind of cool. Readers take a picture of the book on their shelf. Shelfie scans the title and looks for eligible downloads. Some are free, some are discounted. And uh, then you get an ebook on your reader. So. That's a neat idea. How do they know that that's a picture of a book on your shelf and it's not, not one from, from the library. library or something? But, but if you've got a library card, just check out the book and read it. I don't know how all that works. Hey, and then speaking of books, I thought this was just an amazing story. Okay. There is an atheist who is now selling Bibles. Oh. Ah. Yeah. You, you wouldn't necessarily think of those two things going hand in hand. But God is using an atheist to spread his word to Spanish readers. Trevor McKendrick did a little research, and he realized that on iTunes, there's a ton of stuff available, and there's a lot of apps, but there was one thing that was missing. You know what it was? What's that? A Spanish translation of the Bible. There were millions of other apps in every other language you could find, but there were no Spanish translations of the Bible. So he spent about $500 putting together a Spanish translation of the Bible, and the one catch is Trevor McKendrick is not a Christian. He's an atheist. But he's also a guy that likes to make money. And as he reported, regardless of whether or not I believe, the good news is there are a lot of believers that do want to find this. And I figured, hey, someone's going to profit helping them, so it might as well be me. Huh. How cool is that? You'd never expect to hear that. Usually when you hear somebody that's an atheist, they're doing everything they can to not get the word out there. My only concern is I hope somebody goes through to make sure that this is an actual well, that's translation. What, I'm say. what if it's not, if he's the one who. Translated I don't it. think he did. He spent the money to have it done. So 
I don't know. Interesting. I would I think he could be cool. in a lot of trouble if he translated it wrong and well, sold it to people. Yeah, you'd you'd hope so. I would think he'd be in a lot of trouble. I don't know. Well, he'll he'll pay the price one day. I'm certain of that. If he did something wrong, yeah. All I know is I thought that was kind of an interesting story and a good way to end the program. Thanks for listening. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on another edition of the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break, only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. And your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. We've talked about these guys before, haven't we? Many you ever heard times. of them? I actually use the Dollar Shave Club. I get their razors. They bring them to me every single month, and I couldn't do without it now. I absolutely couldn't. This is, I think, my biggest find of 2015. Probably. It really You're is. You're sure excited about it. I am. I love it. I absolutely love it because... Before, you used to buy me razors. First of all, you bought me the cheapest thing you could find. You're like, hey, I found oh, a 20-pack for a dollar. Do you know how sick I get of hearing this? I know. It was it was bad, and I apologize <laughs> for bringing that up every single day. But uh, I, I love these razors. For as little as 3 bucks a month, they'll bring razors right to you. Now, you can do what I did. I started with the $3 razors, and those are nice. And then I tried the $6 razors. Now I'm up to their best razors they possibly have, 9 bucks a month. And they're really, really good ones. They're like four or five blades in there, whatever they are. Five blades, six, I don't know, ten blades. I have no clue. All I use them for is shaving. I don't count the blades. But you can check it out at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. And I've got quite the story for you here. Have you ever heard of the Slinky? Oh, yeah. Did you have a Slinky as a Yes, kid? I've had many Slinkies. Do you know how the Slinky came about? No. Buckle up, Heidi. It's a fun little story. Slinky, slinky. Remember the little uh-huh. commercials? Mm-hmm. And is it's a wonderful toy made for a girl or a boy. But the slinky, about 63 feet of wire, was originally developed to be a toy. But other applications for the slinky have been discovered, too. The slinky has been used as an antenna by soldiers in Vietnam. Huh. Slinkies have been used as therapy tools. They've been used as coordination development for coordination development. Oh, so like somebody that... Uh, is trying to get their coordination skills back. It's it's helped with that. Possibilities are endless. The Slinky's also been used in movies. Slinky's appearance includes Ace Ventura, yeah, When I remember Nature that, Calls. When Nature Calls. Demolition Man. Honestly, that's what I was thinking of. As soon as you mentioned Slinky, I was thinking of Ace Ventura. What was it that he did in that? He pushed it. He was living in that Buddhist temple, remember? Oh, yeah. And he pushed it down all those stairs. That's right. I forgot <laughs> about that. Demolition Man, it was in. Other People's Money and Hairspray. Disney's digital animated feature Toy Story, the Slinky Dog, played an important role. His name was Slinky mm-hmm. or Slink. But here's where it came from. For those of you who've always wondered, where in the world did that Slinky come from? I did the research for you. <laughs> yeah, you did. Somebody else did. Right? <laughs> I found it. So, uh, But in 1945, Richard James invented one of the coolest toys ever, the Slinky. James was a naval engineer, and they were conducting an experiment with tension springs. During his experiment, one of the springs fell to the floor and it began to, quote, walk. James took that spring home to his wife, Betty, and he asked if she thought this would be something that maybe would be a fun thing for them to pursue. Betty had a vision for a toy and scoured the dictionary looking for a word that just might work as the name. She came across a word, slinky. Do you know what it is? No. It's a Swedish word meaning stealthy, sleek, and sinuous. Ah. That's what that means. Toy history was made. The Slinky debuted at Gimbel's Department Store in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1946. Richard and Betty were skeptical about how Slinky would sell. All their doubts were put to rest when all 400 Slinkies that they made sold in 90 minutes. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Since then, guess how many Slinkies have sold? Oh. Over a quarter of a billion. Yeah, it's over 250 million. The Slinky is still made in Hollisburg, Pennsylvania. Holidaysburg. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Somewhere in Pennsylvania. Maybe I USA. I love the Slinky. And it still uses the original equipment to make it. Richard James created that stuff way back in the 40s. Slinky has challenged uh, a little over, has uh, changed a little over the last 50 years. One of the things that they changed was the end. They put a crimp on the end to make the wire uh, a little safer mm-hmm. uh, before it wasn't quite as safe. So there you go. Now you know. Very cool. I think that's really cool. And we had <coughs> some. Interesting proposals. We had one a week ago where a person put a bunch of Christmas lights on a storage unit. Remember oh, that? yeah, yeah. Wedding proposals. I thought yeah. you meant somebody proposed something to us, like business ideas. No, no, no. Okay. That happens all yeah. the time, too. They're like, hey, you guys are crazy. I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> <laughs> Cut this idea. Uh, but no, this one here, uh, I'm talking about wedding proposals. Yeah. 
So the guy that did all the lights. Uh, there was a guy last year that poured a bunch of gasoline on uh, in a field and lit it on fire and right. ended up burning a field down. Anyway, here are some off the wall proposal ideas. So just in case you're you're looking for a way for your proposal to stand out, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you you you're going to be able to hear Heidi roll her eyes here in a second. Have your parole officer pass on the request. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Get Will You Marry Me tattooed on some part of your body. (laughs) Handcuff yourself to her and throw away the key. (laughs) She doesn't have a choice then. Send her an email. Would you marry me? No. Please reply. Uh, Burp your proposal. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Do something really unique and have a carrier pigeon deliver it. Uh, Dress up like a bride. That's kind of cute, actually. That would be. That one's kind of cute. What if the bird went to the wrong person? That would be bad. I don't know. Dress up like a bride and show up at her office. Oh, my God. That would be... Can you imagine that? That'd be uh, bad. Oh. Kidnap her and take her on Oprah and proclaim your love. Oh, my gosh. I think that's been done before. <laughs> and last one, get a restraining order and have her arrested. Then tell her she's been punked. Hey, you know, I don't really need a restraining order. I want to marry you. You might want to know her really well before you do any of wow. those. So there's a list of, of uh, proposal ideas. Since we've been talking about those, that was sent to me some fun ideas to share. What'd you think, Heidi? Uh, no. Was it worth saving for the bonus break? Oh, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Hey, a Western Virginia man tried pawning a digital camera that he stole at a convenience store, but he didn't erase the pictures of himself holding a gun oh. and wearing clothing that he was wearing at the time of the robbery, according oh, to police. They made it easy for them, and he faces a 10-year sentence now if convicted, and he's the one that brought them the evidence. What, what an idiot. dummy. Hey, a woman who was arrested at Jaeger Airport for twice pulling the fire alarm, causing shutdowns at the airport, <laughs> was arrested. She said she did it because she wasn't getting the attention she wanted from Continental Airlines personnel. She was caught both times during the airport oh evacuations because she was standing around by herself laughing. <laughs> Everybody else is freaking out, going, oh, the place is on fire. And she's like, ah, ah, it ain't on fire. Yeah, it was just me pulling that alarm. Oh, Continental, I got your attention man. now. And then finally, an elderly gentleman recently walked into a Sacramento, California police station and told the officers officers that he thought that he had robbed a Wells Fargo bank earlier in the week. The officers did not Yeah. Officers did not take his confession very seriously because who would walk in and confess like that? Plus the man was very old. Obviously he had some ailments. He was carrying a hospital bag and he explained that he had intentions of remitting himself to a psychiatric hospital. With that in mind, cops thought he must be confused. Uh, plus, he couldn't remember which bank it was or where he did it. Well, come to find out, the FBI discovered that, in fact, a senior citizen oh had gosh. robbed and a bank. And they let him go. And in addition to that one, there were two more, three <gasps> more. So there were four banks total, the Wells Fargo that he thought that he had robbed, and then three other banks. So oh, my gosh. This guy is, has dementia, and one of the things that he's doing is robbing banks. So I wonder if maybe that's what he did when he was younger. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. He walked into the police station and said, hey, I think I might have robbed a bank earlier this week. Yeah, why don't you go home <laughs> and check into that? So hopefully they catch him. I don't know what's going on there. That's going to do it for your bonus break. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Bonus break brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.